Welcome back to the Bruce Williams channel. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about this Seiko Tuna on the desk in front of the camera. This is the SBBN031. It's a discontinued uh, prior generation Tuna with the lovely Marine Master on the dial, uh, the old pointer style handset. We have the best loom available that I've ever seen on a Seiko on this generation of the Tuna. It's actually better than the current updated generation of the Tuna. It's really phenomenal loom. But anyways, I wanna talk a little bit about this. We've had, <laughs> I say we, I'm talking about me and Random Rob. This is Random Rob's Tuna that he sent me about eight months ago. And we've had kind of a long ordeal with this watch. And I just wanna share the experience uh, because I think it's important to share just the common everyday type experiences of watch ownership. And so again, like I mentioned, Robert sent this to me about eight months ago and he wanted me to take it to my local watchmaker who is one of the best watchmakers in the country, in my biased opinion, uh, to do an upgrade on it. He wanted an upgraded sapphire crystal so he could take this and use it as a giveaway for when he hit 50,000 subscribers. And he has done that. He's hit 50,000. Huge congrats to my buddy, Random Rob, for doing that. But anyways, he sent it to me. I took it to uh, my watchmaker. And you guys can see here's some of the footage of, uh, of disassembling this watch and trying to swap in a crystal times crystal made out of sapphire. Now, we ran into a problem we found out that the crystal time sapphire crystal was a completely different profile in different size from the OEM. So it would not, uh, we just couldn't make the swap or I say we, it's I'm not, no, it wasn't me. It was my watchmaker could not make the swap. As you guys can see here from this photograph, it's, it's totally different. Uh, so anyways, Robert decided just, hey, let's just go back to OEM. Let's go with stock and I'll just give away an awesome stock tuna for my 50,000 subscriber giveaway. Now, when that happened, we started noticing that the movement was failing and this watch was fairly new. Robert bought it from uh, someone within his Discord server who had bought it brand new not too long ago. So it definitely should have been running properly. The 7C46 quartz movement here with an inhibition circuit, uh, seven jewel gear train, it should have been working properly, but it wasn't. So my watchmaker suggested, you know what, let's just send this into Seiko and they can, uh, they can do the repair. Let's see if they'll cover it under warranty. So that's what we decided to do. We sent it into Seiko and let me show you the, um, just the receipt here. I'm not sure exactly the invoice. It was received by Seiko on the 9th of March, 2021. And um, you guys can see this is what they decided to do. They charged for an installation, $10, a movement repair, $142.67, and a water test, which was included. They charged shipping. The grand total came to $164.67. And no, it wasn't and um, covered under warranty. We had to pay this or Robert had to pay uh, for the movement repair. And I don't know whether Seiko just replaced the 7C46 quartz movement or they found a faulty component within, you know, the, the, the module. It's unclear, uh, but they did include some remarks. They said the timepiece movement needs a service. Okay, fair enough. The crystal scratched. The case is scratched or shows wear. The case back is scratched and the band was not received. So, uh, which is funny because, you know, this is a used watch and I took off the bracelet before we sent it into Seiko. So I basically, they're just telling me, hey, we've got a used watch that's a little bit scratched up. And then they said that the new module or the movement will be, uh, the repair will be guaranteed for one year above the date, except for defects caused by accident or neglect, which here's where it gets a little bit fuzzy or tricky. It was, re it was received on the 9th of March. And as you guys know, we're in November. We just barely got this back from Seiko. They had it for nearly seven months, which if it says the guarantee is guaranteed for one year from the date above, there is no other date above. I mean, they didn't do a return date here. I'm assuming they're referring to this, which more than half of that time has gone past just with them having it, Seiko having it. And I want to say this. 
I'm tr- I try to be realistic. I, do- I try not to be an entitled tool with unrealistic expectations. So I recognize when you do a service on a watch, whatever it is, and it goes into the manufacturer or it goes to the service center, their authorized service center, you can generally expect to be parted from that watch for at least 90 days, for three months. But for six months, seven months, double that time or more, more than double that expectation, that seems to be excessive in my opinion. Um, and I don't know why it took them so long. Maybe they're super busy. Maybe they're backed up. Maybe they didn't have a tech that could work on the 7C46 quartz movement. Maybe they were waiting on a brand new movement coming from Japan to the United States Service Center. I don't know. You know, there's there's no information here about that, but it did take a long time. But the nice thing is it's working perfectly now and it's a beautiful watch. In fact, I'm halfway tempted to say, Robert, I'm not sending this back to you. I'm going to send you some money instead. And I want to try this out for a little while. I've owned a couple tunas over the years, uh, but this one, this one's cool because like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have the lovely Marine Master on the face of the dial, which is not found on the current generation. We have the far better loom application. I mean, the new tuna loom, it's good, but it's not close to how good this loom is. This loom is nuclear. It's it's amazing loom. I'm not the biggest fan of the pointer hand, but I do like the triangle in the bezel pip and how that works with the 12 o'clock applique or not applique, but um, oh, excuse me, printed marker. And then how that also ties in with your pointer hour hand. There's a lot of repetition of form here that's beautiful. And it comes on the bracelet and it's less expensive than the current generation. So this seems to be just a great model that when it's available, it would be a good idea to pick up because once it becomes, I guess you could say hard to get, it's already discontinued. Available, uh, you know, new units are, they're fewer and far between. Prices are starting to go up. Once it becomes very hard to get, then the prices will go up accordingly and you'll feel like you missed out on what was an awesome generation that had some upgrades that the current generation just doesn't have. Now, a couple things, I mean, uh, the crystal is hard lex. It's a beautiful shape, but it's not sapphire. And I know that the crystal times, at least the crystal times crystal that was uh, sourced by Robert just didn't fit here. So you're going to have to live with some wear and tear if you buy one of these generations, or perhaps maybe go with the new flat sapphire crystal you know, OEM from the current generation and swap that in with this. I would assume it's compatible. But um, anyways, guys, just wanted to share the experience, <laughs> Robert's experience. And I've been kind of involved throughout the process of trying to mod this, failing, having the movement fail, sending it into Seiko, having them take seven months to repair it. And now it's back to me. And uh, I'm going to send it back to Robert if I don't buy it from him outright, because check it out. It's an awesome watch. It's a beauty. So thanks for watching today, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oh, you know what? Let me show you what I'm wearing today. Marine Master 300 from Seiko. This is the Thongsia Limited exclusive. It's absolutely awesome. And while we're at it, let's throw in a couple other Seikos. We've got a Beatmaker Limited Edition SRP H19K1. And then this one, which I've recently filmed the review on, this is the uh, Sumo Thailand exclusive Phi Takan edition. And I've got to say, this one is, is my favorite so far. I actually like it more than this Marine Master. It's a lovely release. So let's just get a shot of a few <laughs> awesome Seiko divers as we close. I know I already said my closing spiel, but take a look at these awesome Seikos. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. See you next time.